everybody we made it to the end of the series so now I can put on my brand new skin we watched uh, all the extended editions of Lord of the Rings for New Year's Day and by Return of the King I, I decided that for some reason I wanted to make a new skin so here it is I've been excited to use this one anyways we are here at my first build of the 30-day challenge that I just completed. The very first part of this video is just going to be touring the different builds that I did and looking at how, like, I've grown. So our first one was this fountain. And, like, that was a pretty great and promising start, I do believe. Um, one of the things I learned with this was actually that you can plant flowers on farmland. And that was pretty awesome because it has definitely contributed to a lot of my builds in the rest of the series. On day two, we did this library back here in the woods. And I learned some cool things with this one. One was just like shaping the roof and kind of figuring out how stairs go, how I can change like how I can make transitions between different shapes in roofs and so that was just a lot that I learned through that. But it was a really cool build and I haven't come back here in a little while but I just I love it. It turned out really awesome and really was exactly the vibes I was going for. On day three, we built a campsite right out of outside of town on this little hill by the gatehouse. And I got to explore some creative things, like with how I put together the uh, campfire and just like using wool to build this and trying to figure out what would make it look the most tent-like. My fourth build was this medieval flower shop. And it was definitely my weakest build by far. Um, I hadn't necessarily like put together some of the ideas about structural building. Um, and yet, I still like, I love the interior. I love some of the little details I was able to throw in here. I put some storytelling building to use with this um, loft area where like, in my little storyline for this shop, someone is learning how to read, teaching themselves how to read. As an honorable mention too, it's the only build that ended up with any sort of basement. I initially did the flower shop and the stable backwards out of order. Um, so this was technically the fourth build that I worked on, but it was the fifth day in our challenge. Um, and I loved, like, the challenge was to use a color palette using mangrove and melons. I put this in here because I just love this color palette. I love how they go together. But this is one where I really started utilizing a little bit of, like, adding shapes to the basic floor plan. Um, even just in this, like, entryway area. Um... Which gave me more space to work with, too, within the actual stable area. I also added some exterior details, a water trough, our pile of hay bales. And this is where I feel like I started getting the feel for what looked good in a build. Our next project was this park area. The wishing well in the middle came later, um, but we really worked with just, like, finding the space for this, terraforming it, and turning it into a manicured lawn type area. And then we walked right next door to work on our diner. This is by far my favorite of my earlier builds. I learned a lot of different ideas with this, um, from lighting with the end rods to this very small interior. I learned, I think, a lot about interior detailing with this one um, and just started like thinking through some of my own ideas for it. On day eight, we worked on this beach hut 
And this was fun because like I had to figure out some environmental stuff as far as like adding lighting in that was like a little more believable and just this little vacation-y area. It was also the first build that I worked on that was circular and that was pretty uh, terrifying for me. But I really started enjoying working with circles after this point. This one was inspired by the farmer's market in my hometown um, and was just a lot of fun to work on because I got to think about like little tiny details and like what an area would look like to sell different items. I did want to point out that I did make this change eventually um, from how it originally was with just like piles of wool in the middle to more of a table display with wool laid out. Um, kind of looking a little bit more like, you know, skeins of yarn and then along with the tools to work with it. Day 10 was our bakery with this really, really lovely display window that I'm still very in love with. This was another one where I just had to think about a lot of different details and this one was interesting because it had a lot of space to fill and while I did more living areas, upstairs the downstairs was supposed to be kind of you know commercial and so working through the difference of like oh well there's a bedroom up here and so obviously I can add some things like a bed as opposed to we need more of a seating area and just general like kitchen place to buy things stuff like that down here Day 11 was when I started looking at um, ideas and things about building a little bit more deeply. Um, I started watching a lot of videos um, about how to polish builds and things like that. On day 12, I went and used an idea for a roof shaping that I had seen elsewhere. I love this one um, even though it's kind of a big glass box it's a pretty big glass box and the interior is just absolute delight on day 13 we worked on the longest and most tedious build the restaurant but it's so rewarding I mean look at the gradient on that roof it's so pretty um, I really leaned into working on framing with this one. And while this isn't the most detailed interior that I've done, I really, really love how this all pulled together, especially with the sandstone and the walls and the dark oak and just the general colors everywhere in this build. Color-wise, I would say that this one is probably definitely my favorite. Both the restaurant and then this forest cottage have my favorite roofs. Um, one thing that I pointed out in the video for this is that I did add cobblestone into it because again, you can't just like have one block in something. It becomes so tiring to look at. On day 15, we worked on this pond. Um, it was a little bit more of an environmental type experiment, but you can see that I really um, started using the ideas from the wishing well for an underwater scene that I got and then turning it into something as large as and, and full of life as a pond. On days 16 and 17, we did two builds in contrasting styles. One was this bridge, which was more of an elven style. And you can see that in like the tapering angles to the top, both in the arches underneath the bridge and the roof itself. But I think between the color palette that I used on this and just that general like steep angles, it got the point across even without being a huge grand build. 
Alternatively, on day 17, we had our dwarven style build. Um, and you can see it in the much more curved roof, um, the much darker um, color palette. And it also just turned into a very beautiful little cafe and coffee shop. I also utilized a um, pattern on the floor and this is pulled from a Turkish embroidery pattern. But you can just see that like this gave a little bit more of the blocky, less sharp vibe of a dwarven style build as opposed to the steep angles of our elven build. I also started really uh, leaning into exterior details and these are actually some of my very favorites. Speaking of exterior details, on day 18 we worked on this windmill which is all exterior details. Um, from the flower fields outside which just bring me so much happy summer joy. Uh, we're starting to get daylight again where I am like in the afternoon and I am so ready for that warm summer happiness. But we've also just got like little bits of exterior details that show you know, what this place is. On day 19, we worked on my fairy house. And not only did it have a very cool gradient in the roof, but it also was a build where I scaled down a lot of the stuff that I've been doing in other builds and really tried to pack some detail into it. I love this upper area, the bedroom area. Um, using This was the first time I used armor stands in a build, and how, why did I not think of that before? They really give a purpose to the area. On day 20, I made my large custom tree. And I've made one custom tree before, um, to this scale anyways. But I really loved how this one turned out. Um, between the details just around the roots, both in the like darker areas at the bottom of the tree and, you know, mushrooms and flowers everywhere. Um, and then just the general shape of this tree, I think it turned out really, really well, especially considering how scared I was of it. Um, the tree house itself wasn't all that impressive, but one thing I really uh, worked with was like using composters as a transition between dark oak and regular oak and it might not look the best at this small of a scale but I can really see it working in a larger scale build. Out by the river and past the park I made a dock area um, with a big old wharf and this build just gave some like life and ambiance and personality to the town. Um, looks like our dear captain has perished, unfortunately. Rained too many times. On day 22, we built a fire truck. And this one was tricky because it is inherently a small build compared to the other things that I've done. And yet there's so much detail that goes into both the exterior and interior. With this one, I utilized signs with glow ink and dyes on it in various patterns to kind of bring across some of the um, details that would go into the exterior of a fire truck. With this ice cream store, my goal was for it to be bright and magical. Um, I also used a copper gradient in the roof, um, but I don't like my gradients just being lines, though I think that looks awesome as you can see in the restaurant. But I worked on um, kind of texturing this gradient a little bit. But this is another interior that I'm very proud of and I think gets, gets the idea across of what's actually going on here. On day 24, we built some circus tents, and this was a very different vibe than really what's going on in the rest of this town. In this one, we used a lot of bright colors that we're not necessarily using so generously in the other builds, but also 
I had to think about like what would the actual like texture of a cloth build look like um, because it's not going to be that straight up and down um, wall. On day 25, we finally built the entrance to this town. And this was another area where I really realized that I had to add texturing to a um, block that was my main block in the build because otherwise you just could not look at it. The next few builds really worked on getting me to be more comfortable with organic shapes in my builds because that is something that I was really struggling with at this point. Um, so on day 26 we made this witch's house and it has a cute little witch's hat on top of it. The next day we also added some mushrooms around the house both to give, you know, the vibe of the house itself but also as another practice in certain organic shapes that maybe I wouldn't use in other builds in this challenge. Um, my particular favorite from this was this twisty top. Day 28 we worked on this orchard and that not only gave me just an idea of like how to um, give hints as to what like is intended with this tree that I'm building but also just gave me a lot of repetitive practice in organic shaping once again. Day 29 was another personal favorite. Um, this aquarium built with like modern style and structuring. Between like finally getting to experiment with like outsetting colored um, contrast pieces from the main build, um, I got to play with a terracotta patterned floor again um, and just have a beautiful, beautiful aquarium. And then for day 30, we had a huge terraforming project. Um, this is another like aspect of building that has really terrified me, um, both in like watching other people do it and generally like trying to make my own areas. And um, this gave me some confidence that maybe, maybe I can do a little bit better than what I might have thought. Oh my gosh, look at the very cute foxes. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. My dog looks like that right now. Oh my gosh, this is the cutest thing. I love it. I wish you could tame them better because Minecraft foxes are the closest thing to like my dog that Minecraft has. I've mentioned a couple of times and in a couple of places um, throughout this series that this is pretty much the first building in Minecraft that I've done. I have worked on a couple of builds in survival, um, one in my single player world that I have a series of videos in, um, and one in a server that I play on just with some friends, and I'm going to do just a quick flyover of those. So the one in my survival world, which is the first one I'll show, is the first thing that I built and completed. I was playing around with some ideas in creative mode, but I never actually like finished a build. It was just little bits like how do you texture a wall, stuff like that. Um, so this, this is the first build that I ever completed and I'm going to show that right now. So the other build that I've done outside of this series is on a server with friends and I worked on like the first bit of building it um, in the video in which I announced this series. I've continued working on it while I've been working on this series as well and I'm just going to give a little quick 
snippet of that one as well just so you can kind of see what I've been working on as more of a longer term project than these small builds. This building challenge really was a um, practice in basic building in Minecraft and I feel like I've grown a lot in my building abilities um, and come a long way from some of the very basic structures that I started with. I'm sure in the future I will continue to do building challenges or at least building videos that are um, a little bit more detailed, a little bit more advanced, things like large organic statues. Like, I want to build a dragon someday. Um, and I'm sure that I will have videos and series coming up of that, but um, I'm not going to be doing them as a build a day type videos because that was a lot and I do not need to put myself through this again. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this series and that this video was a good little like summary of what we did with it. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe and join me on my journey. Maybe go back and look at some of my older videos and they're not that old. I started putting them out in October and I will be releasing some more content in probably a couple of weeks. I'm so excited to have you guys along for this beautiful, beautiful journey that is Minecraft. It means so much to me that um, so many of you have come along. Thank you to those who have been with this series from day one, to those who were building along, and to some of you who joined later um, and were so encouraging and kind. Um, all the kind comments that I got throughout this series really, really, like, made the day that I got them, but really encouraged me in just exploring this and pursuing this journey a little bit more. So thank you to all of you. Um, and I am so excited to continue sharing this journey with you. I will see you in a couple of weeks for my next video in my survival world again. I'm so excited to get back there and to get working um, on many, many projects that I have coming up. So hopefully I'll see you over there. But until then, bye.